Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm Natasha Yakovlev and Helen Kahn, commissioners, and the meeting is now called to order at 4 p.m. And just so everybody knows that the, um, there is video and audio recording happening. Is there any public comment? None. Uh, item number three is the application for short-term liquor licenses for the academy, which we will skip for now. They are not here. Yeah. Uh, number two, common victory license for Un Arat Cafe. That's not you folks. Not here either. Uh, number five, public hearing on an application for transfer of annual on-premises wine and malt restaurant license. MP Majestic Enterprises, LLC, DBA Majestic Saloon, 24 Main Street, previous holder, Noble Han, LLC, DBA The Boundary. Proposed manager is Michael Prosiak. Prosiak. Yeah. Prosiak. Yeah. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> do we need to open a public hearing formally? Mm -hmm. So we will now be formally opening the public hearing. Okay. And. paperwork so you are going to be taking over the space correct uh, myself and my partner Phil Peak which is behind me mm -hmm. uh, we we wouldn't say we purchased it or renting the space because it wasn't really a purchase of the business mm -hmm. um, so we, what we're wanting to do is transfer the liquor license over into our name to operate basically exactly what they were doing before okay um, we're gonna be having food high-end craft beer, wine. Um, we're working out a deal with Local Burger to do food as well. And we're also gonna uh, do food with a very small menu on our, uh, in our kitchen as well. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> and we have all of your documents in hand. Have you ever owned a bar? Or I ran a bar? tunnel bar, well I was at the tunnel bar in deck for 13 years. I was a manager, the bar manager there for five years. I do uh, restaurant bar consulting. Um, so I've been in the business for quite a long time, okay. about 20 years now. So that's the next next step in my my life is to own my own place. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. And it says um, in your application that uh, I guess you were working at the Tunnel Bar until 2013. Is that correct? Correct. And then what have you been doing for the last five years? So I worked at UMass uh, doing the parking over there. And I worked uh, running several different bars, uh, one being the Hideaway Lounge in East Hampton. Uh, I helped uh, reform the TNT Sports Bar and Grill in Holyoke. Uh, I started up Hawks and Reed in Greenfield, so it's just kind of a lot of freelancing and, and consulting, helping doing bar menus, training staff, hiring, firing, that kind of stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so now Helen and I discuss. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any don't concerns or thoughts? So I'm going to get some order. So. Yep. And should we close the public hearing before we make a motion? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this closes the public hearing on this application. Uh, I will make a, did you have any questions for us or anything else to say? I don't think so. I think that no. covers it. Okay. I will make a motion to uh, approve the transfer of the annual on-premises wine and malt restaurant license from Noble Han LLC to MP Majestic Enterprises LLC. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. You are here for applications for short-term liquor licenses for the Here's Academy of Music, Incorporated DBA Academy of Music here at 274 Main Street in Northampton for a wine and malt license, and you are requesting a fee waiver for the following dates, December 7th, 2018, 6-9 for the Nutcracker, December 14th, 2018, 7-10 for the Jim Maskus concert, December 22nd, 2018, 7 to 10 for the Sweetback Sisters concert. Yes? Oh, correct. Excellent. Yeah. 
Has anything changed in how you're operating? No, nope. same crew, same sleepy same. audience. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have no questions though. Mm, Excellent. Do you want to make a motion? Sure, I make a motion to approve um, the short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music. Um, at 274 Main Street, Northampton. Um, also approved the fee waiver um, for the dates, times, and events mm -hmm. listed. I'm to say that. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thanks, Abby. Yes. Aye. All right, so item four, there's one right here. Item six, application for short term liquor licenses. That's us. That's you. We're sitting here with the Director of Chamber of Commerce. Um, so we are trying to get ahead of the game and line up our uh, networking events for the year. And we have three, uh, January, February, and March, that we're in front of you um, for tonight. The first is, um, we're confirming the date, because I thought it's the 9th of January. The second one is February 6th. And the third license uh, that we're asking for is on March 6th. So, so the, just the agenda lists the date as January 7th, and so, did you ask and so does the application. So that was that was a mistake we need to correct. Um, we got word today that the uh, host for our January event um, is no longer able to do it. So, what uh, talked to Annie about uh, and. We, don't have a replacement because it just happened today. Mm -hmm. So what we'd like to do is um, have you go forward and do an amendment that's contingent on the location when we're able to secure that, which should be before, I mean, hopefully the next couple of weeks, if not this week. The others, uh, the February event is at ServiceNet in their offices that recently opened on Olander Drive at Village Hill. And the third on, in March is at uh, the Ottoman, which has a new owner and some exciting plans about using their um, cafe space and what the, has been the breakfast space. And um, these are events that go from five to seven, and I'm happy to answer any questions about them that I've overlooked. Okay. <laughs> so, for the record, I'm just going to read them for so any happy with us um, okay so as you've said you're here for the applications for the short-term liquor licenses for the Chamber of Commerce for wine and malt networking events to take place at a determined um, not yet determined location for the January 9th 2019 5 to 7 p.m. service that at Olander Drive February 6 2019 5 to 7 and the Ottoman at 259 Elm Street March 6 2019 from 5 to 7 p.m. okay so you're so in terms of the um, people serving the all of that is the same as you've done it in the past yeah so um i imagine you're going to want the tip certified number are you still gathering those okay so we don't i don't think we had anything at the time we submitted the application so we'll have to provide that to you i did bring a certificate of insurance if that's something uh, i have that you already have it yeah. okay great okay do you have any questions so it's the same people no matter what the event and the location it's the same no or it's oh, kind of right. depends on oh, like okay. likely the ottoman will have a tip certified oh, person okay. we just don't have the number or at service net will have to free do we know who's catering no and that's i think that's part of why is um kristen Cole, who used to file them uh explained to me that they um we would say that they would need to hire a, tip, a mm -hmm. certified provider and that that is part of the obligation mm -hmm. um, of their hosting. Okay. So I should have done this at the top. This is Lucy Abbott. She <laughs> will be coming before you for any additional licenses that we need to get um, this year. She's a, our new program and event manager, and we're really happy to have her, and I'm sure you'll enjoy working with her. Great. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yes. Well, I have no other questions, and you have no other questions? Um, no, I don't, okay. except for... But the, I guess you can do the motion to approve because it'll be contingent upon location right. and giving all the paper, the application and the mm -hmm. appropriate paperwork. Okay, so so I'll make a motion to approve the applications for short-term liquor licenses for the Chamber of Commerce for networking events at um, on January 9th at a location to be determined, 
and from five to seven and at ServiceNet on February 6th, five to seven and the autumn in from five to seven with tips, numbers to be provided when available. I second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Good luck with emails. Bye, Lucy. It was really nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you. Nice to see you, Susia. Yeah, great to see you. Okay, so okay. Um, Susia, 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 let's see about the other folks on here. Is this something that we need? I just want to oh, check in case she said that. She'll oh. probably ask her if it will be taken. But I didn't want to do it. Just the other thing. I'm fine. Right. And now we know half of the stories too. Yeah. Before. Oh, great time. Okay, okay. Yeah. so Sorry. report from building commissioner and annual liquor license inspection. Okay, so um, I'll just read it. Yeah. I think they were going to hold head over yeah. around 420. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, mm -hmm. as of December 4th, the fire department will be having their first round of inspection. Window shut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just hang around the second floor. Yeah. Yeah. Gun re-inspection. He's probably busy getting set up. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure Jody's on her way to can help. One of five outstanding <laughs> issues and two have not been inspected. We've contacted all 22 establishments that have not passed and let them know that inspection certificates are required for license renewals. We are scheduling the remaining two inspections and 20 re-inspections for December, Tuesday, December 12th and Friday, December 14th. None of the outstanding issues are significant. We anticipate that all establishments will have passed inspection before the year is over. Um, and I guess the biggest biggest issue is a hood needs to be cleaned. Oh, so that's that's the biggest problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, renewals. Item number eight: request approval of the annual 2019 liquor license renewals and discussion of renewal issues. Annual package store licenses. Okay, so all package store licenses have filed renewal paperwork and there's no issues in package stores. So you can um, pull these out separately. Okay. So do package stores as one boat. Okay. Okay. And you want to do that before we move on or um, after all of the renewals? I mean, whatever. Okay. I would just as soon do that now. Yeah. Sure. I will make a motion to um, approve of the 2019 liquor license renewals for all annual package store licenses. All 17 annual package store licenses. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Annual liquor licenses contingent upon certificate of inspection. And that's what we just heard from. Or are these separate? No, these are separate. Those are, yes. So um, so you'll approve them contingent upon their certificate because some of them don't have them. Okay. Um, so we have, let's see, 28 all alcohol, <coughs> two exceptions. Um, 19 wine and malt with two exceptions, three all alcohol inholders, six general on premise, four club, one special section, 14 wine and malt, two farmer brewery corn permits, and one farmer winery permit. Um, I said, oh, I didn't change this. This is 19. So on, um, it's 19 wine and malt because, okay. um, let's see, we have Sam's is not renewing. Sam's is not renewing. Nope. He's shut, oh. shut down operation December 31st at midnight. Of everything? Um, he hasn't decided if he's going to renew his common Vic, which would be his food license. Um, he, he was going back and forth on whether he should renew it or not because he's, I guess he's thinking of doing something different with a business partner and didn't want to pay the renewal fee if they were going to use it. Um, and he can get a, a wine and mall. He can get a seasonal and then eventually convert it to an annual. Right. So it's really not that much of I any. Mean, he'll be able to get one and yep. other wine and mall. It's so, mm -hmm. not renewing. Anyway. Mm -hmm. All right. The um, one that didn't make it onto the agenda is Caminito mm -hmm. is not renewing because 
um, they have already been approved their all or their all alcohol that transfer we did from the clarion license so they were approved that on November 30th so um, he doesn't need to renew his okay. yeah because he'll have his okay. all alcohol okay. now okay. Yeah. Sakura is it's being renewed. It's not open for business, um, but they're renewing it to allow time to find a buyer. Oh, okay. So we, that will need to be voted to renew. Voted to renew. Um, Wait. So mm -hmm. what? What's that? Mean? So it'll. Need so. I mean, I understand what they're doing, but you're saying. As far as we're concerned, we it, it needs yeah. to be. I mean, you have to vote to renew it, okay, along with the others. It was pulled out separately because the ABCC that um, you have to certify that all the premises is open for business, right. and since it's not, I needed to inform you and right, okay. Okay. Is that yeah. Are they allowed to hold that? Do this? So essentially, they're holding it to make it more, um attractive to a buyer is that what you're saying yes and okay. because if they didn't renew the city would lose it completely it would go back to boston and uh -huh. be out one alcohol because we're over quota and uh -huh. we can never get any so if any don't renew yep. we're down one and we don't get it back ever because uh -huh. we're grandfathered in we're way over quota oh okay so that's what's happened what happened with sam's well, no, because that's a wine and malt. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is an all alcohol. That's an all alcohol. So the, the wine and malts, there's a there's a loophole that um, if you can apply for a seasonal wine and malt because there there's an like an unlimited amount of them, and then after a few months of good operation, you can convert it to an annual. So mm -hmm. there there will always be an, a wine and malt available, but there will never be right. an all alcohol unless we have a huge spike in our population. Okay. Right. You said we're at 21 with them? Is that what goes? Uh, with all alcohol? Oh, 28. 28. 28. 28, but that doesn't include Sakura, which makes it 29, and Osaka, which makes it 30. Okay. And now it's 31 because Caminito got theirs a few days ago. So, Fortune Creative is a wine and malt. They are on here because they need to renew their their wage bond, and they have yet to do it. So um, it will have to be. The insurance agent has confirmed that it's set for renewal. She just has a few outstanding questions from the owner. Mm -hmm. um, he's aware of it. He's to go down there, but you'll just have to approve it contingent upon renewal of the wage bond. Okay. And Osaka, we can talk about their wage bond in item nine. Mm -hmm. um, but it's in this category because it'll have to be renewed with all the other ones. But um, they have civil judgments against them equaling $62,000. Um, so this one will have to be renewed with an expiration date of sometime in January, um, like we did last year, um, unless a valid wage bond is presented sooner. Okay. So those are the those are the issues. So an expiration date of I'm sorry, mid January. Uh, sometime in January we will have our January meeting, uh -huh. and then um, I don't know. I guess it really can be. It'll it'll be a temporary license. Um, we had those temporary licenses last year with Sakura yeah. and it Oriental to Taste. Yeah. Um, I mean, now that Osaka's insurance agent is the same one as it's um, 
now from Wallen, and she's the mm -hmm. one that found the other two wage bonds. So she's already found them. So yeah. I remember la last year was the first year, so they were having trouble finding right. a company that would bond them. So now that she's found one, it won't it won't take as long. Um, so yeah. So I don't so I don't think it needs to go into February, the expiration date. Okay. Sometime in January to give them time. Just do the end of January. Yeah. All right. What else? Anything else on those? Uh, no, those were the only um, licenses that were status quo. Okay. So for um, our vote, mm -hmm. can the motion just read? Um, an approval of the renewal with contingent on the certificate of inspection for 28 all alcohol licenses, can that just be read and then pull out, have a separate vote for each of the other four? Yes. Okay. So I want the minutes from last year if that would help. Yes. But, um, yeah, so that's what we did. Don't read those numbers because I think they're different. Sure. <laughs> all right. So I will make, um, are you ready for a motion? Yeah. I will make, <laughs> I will make a motion to approve renewal of the following annual liquor licenses for 2019 contingent upon certificate of inspection for 28 all alcohol restaurant licenses, 19 wine and malt restaurant licenses, three all alcohol in holder licenses, six general on-premise licenses, four club licenses, one special section, 14 wine and malt license, two farmer brewery pouring permits, and one farmer winery pouring permit. So we don't have to say what the exception with the others. Is right, that'll separate. be separate. Okay. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, thank you. Okay, so then we'll do one by one. So the first two, we don't have to do anything because they're not renewing, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> so then for Sakura, I, and this is, all right, so this is contingent on the wage bond. Mm -hmm. so no. Sakura is the one that's not open. So oh, that right, right. You okay. Discuss and decide if that's something that we allow. So right. So, Sakura. yeah, because the business isn't open. So the ABC, the ABCC frowns on that. However, if we do not vote it forward, then we lose the license. Right. Does there have to be some kind of time limit, or is that something that we decide if you know if they are not open within? You mm mean, -hmm. you know, or um, is there a precedent? For this? I don't think there's a number on it, but yeah. I mean, the clarion license that was just transferred. I mean, how long is it the clarion been demolished? In the new building, it's almost. Uh, yeah, so, so like five years. <laughs> okay. Um, so these things happen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, didn't we ask the Clarion to come in? Yep, they and update a few us. times yeah. to give us updates. I remember Divas did that as well. Yes. Um, the the owner uh, or the manager of record of Sakura relinquished all his rights to Kevin, who is the property owner. So now he owns the property and the license. Mm -hmm. um, it's being brokered by someone from Five College Realtors. Oh. And she's been in and asking if anyone is interested in the license. I gave her the list of the people who are usually looking for a license. Um, she's reached out to some of them with no, no one is interested. Um, the mayor said he thought of one person and was going to give them a call. Mm -hmm. um, but as of right now, no, I mean, there's no way that there's any leads. So since I've been on the commission, there have been two instances where we've asked people to come back and give us updates. Mm -hmm. So with Divas and I think the Clarion, and yeah. maybe there was one other. So they're called pocket licenses. Right. So we, there's no established length of time for that period of update, so I don't know in the interest of consistency if we should establish a period of time oh. to ask people to come back. Is it three months? Is it 
it six months? Oh, in terms of having them come and having them updates. come and update no, us so that we're aware of what because cool. these are pocket licenses that are out there not being used. Is that reasonable for us to, to determine just so that it, it's so each person who's in this situation is being asked the same? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I think that makes sense. I don't know, especially how often, right? Right. I don't know if it's six months. I mean, it sounds like these sometimes go for years. Is what you're yes. Telling. I mean, they shouldn't because again, the ABCC doesn't like that. Right. And even on the renewal application, you have to certify that the premise is open for business. Right. And then it says if not, explain below. So. Right. So. Given that it does, you know, marketing these things and finding a buyer does take a period of time, but I think we have to have some diligence on our part of paying attention to the fact that the right. ABCC doesn't like that this happens. Right. We don't like that this happens. Um, the community doesn't like when people are sitting with pocket right. licenses. Um, so in that light, I think six months is reasonable. Okay. What do you think? Do yeah. You think that's I was going to say either six months or four months. Yeah. yeah. Three times a year or twice a year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, four months give this a little bit more of a nuisance for them, so maybe more of a motivator. Yeah. Um, and then there's, for this one, there's a question of who is going to come in. Because the, the Kevin, who is just the property owner now, he is in China, and Ed is the lawyer, so um, he had to. He didn't, I mean, I had to contact Ed for all the renewals. So. Right. And then it works with the broker that comes in. Right. So I guess I'll just say someone who rep represents the company. Yeah. And so Kevin lives in China? Or he's I don't like, know if he lives there or if he's just there for a certain period of time. Yeah. Well, I think in this, for this, I mean, because he's not here, mm -hmm. um, asking for somebody to show up in four months. Is reasonable. Oh, it is. Reasonable. I think so because okay. it's kind of a unique. I mean, it's not. A, it, it's a little unique. That isn't it. That he's. I mean, we've had this come up, or not this particular situation, but where things have come up and people aren't here to show up. Yeah, I and mean, sometimes they're pledged to the bank, and it's the bank's responsibility. Right. And then right. No individual involved. Right. So. I'm fine with four or six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. so then let's make a motion for um, to approve the renewal for for the all alcohol for How Chen Inc. DBA Sakura Vegan Palette contingent on a representative appearing in six months to provide us with an update. Does that make sense? Maybe. Or, or maybe, not even continue. Yeah, maybe not the stipulation. Okay. okay. Because yeah. it has to be renewed. Right. Um, okay. True. Maybe with just, just an update. Okay. Update okay. Or like with the stipulation. I okay. That means that it's contingent on, say, with the stipulation that someone. Right. Okay. So. Representative of the company updates. Do you want me to re say it? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I will make a motion to renew the all alcohol license for How Chen Inc. DBA Sakura Vegan Palette um, with a stipulation that a representative appear in six months to give us an update. I second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. <laughs> all right. So the next one, the Oriental Taste, and this is the wage bond one. So this one is a renewal contingent upon the renewal of the fair wage bond, is that what we're Correct. Saying? And that's not in here, but it's in the is it? And you said that Val has companies, she or has a company on? Lined up. She says it's set for renewal. She just needs a little information from the owner um, about financials. I don't know uh -huh. if it's things have changed for financially. I, I'm not sure. She didn't elaborate. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it, 
I mean, the license expires at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just thinking if it doesn't get renewed by that time. So. Yeah. Did she have an idea of how long it would take her to gather the information that she needs? She didn't. It, I think it just depends on how, when he gets down there, and I don't, I don't know. Yeah. No and this happened last year too. No, because last year they didn't. She, they didn't have a company that would bond these oh. restaurants. So, um, so it's just a renewal. So it's not yeah. as right. Intense. Do you think it'll be done in December? Yeah. So we're saying if we make this contingent, like renewal is contingent upon renewal of the fair wage bond, and it doesn't happen by the end of the year, that means that license disappears. Also, that's <laughs> what we're saying. Um, or yeah. unless we say do the through January thirty first, which is also, or is that even an option? Well, no, because we're renewing yeah. through December. 2019. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking um, for I'm some thinking reason I have the end day. of December in my mind. <laughs> okay, yes. the, they were renewing for the next three weeks and then they. Oh, <laughs> right, no, oh, just no, no. the end of like right. the end no, of the yeah. year. I'm right. thinking end of this year, not the end of 2019. Yeah. So I was thinking, yeah. Oh, but so they, but they have to get this um, fair wage bond before the end of this, this year, year, right? right? In right. order to get a renewal at all for next year. So I guess that's my right. question. Yes. If they don't do it in the next three weeks, then is that I mean they cannot renew? I mean, I guess that's what I mean. Is it dependent upon what we have? Getting the bond yeah. is they're not going to get a license unless they get the bond renewal. Right. So maybe an expiration date the same January thirty first. So they get a temporary ticket. Unless one is presented before the end of the year, then they can so get their full year license. Their 2019 license. Yeah. If they don't, they can get one through the end of January. And they'll have that one until the bond is renewed. Right, so it's essentially giving them an extra month to renew the bond, is what we Yes. And then I don't know if we visit this in January if it hasn't. It should. If they haven't. It should. I would hope it would be yeah. done by then. Okay. Yeah. Right. You want to make the motion for this one? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure about the wording on this. I feel like I it goes, you just, it'll go sort of like this. Sorry to set it. Okay, so, make a motion to approve. <laughs> and this is an all alcohol, right? Yeah, it's a wine malt. Oh, wine and malt. Oh, okay. So it's not as right. big a deal if that's lost. Then. Um, right, because then they could get a seasonal. Mm hmm. And we'll pay five thousand dollar conversion fee. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we should. Yeah. After January. Okay. So I <laughs> make a motion to approve the renewal of the one and all license for Fortune Creative LLC DBA Oriental Taste, contingent upon the renewal of their fair wage bond before January thirty first, twenty nineteen. If it is not renewed before the end of this year, then they have a temporary license through the month of January. If the fair wage bond is renewed, then they can get a full year's license for 2019. I'll second that big motion. <laughs> well, <I'm favorite>. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is a good one. So do we, I feel like we have to go to number nine before we, yep. because do we have to put a number to it before we No, we approval? can go to nine. I mean, but, I mean we have to yeah. renew it Yep. anyways. Okay. So, um, I mean, if you, if you want to go to nine, you can. Okay. okay. Let's go to nine. Determination of the amount of wage bond for a licensee with wage violations for Osaka Japanese Incorporated. So. So you. So you said it's 62,000 is the violations, right? Yeah. 
Yes, uh, 12,000 is a civil penalty, 50,000 is restitution. I don't know if you had a chance to read through the judgments, but failure to keep true and accurate payroll records, employment of minors without work permits, seven counts, employment of 14 and 15 year old minors beyond 7 p.m. during the school year, demanding, requesting, or accepting from the following wait staff or service bartenders any payment or deduction from a tip service charge given to him or her by a patron. That essentially means they took their tips. Yes. So um, the two wage bonds last year, it was recommended by the city solicitor that it be four or five times the amount of the judgment, mm -hmm. and it was set at 5,000 a piece. So this is a little different. Mm -hmm. Oh, you said, oh, the four or five times became 5,000? Like you're saying, it was yeah, the 1,000 was the- Yeah, yeah, their bond, yeah it was about 12, 1,300. So their, um, their bond was only 5,000. Oh, okay, yeah. whereas this would put it up to 186 if we did that three times. Um, yeah. In the conversations that we had with Attorney Seawalls, yeah. we talked about um, trying to balance the punitive nature of this with the ability for business to stay open. Right. Um, It's an it's a, an additional insurance yeah, so kind of. They have to put up cash up front. Mm -hmm. Don't know if it's a percent of the total amount, but I think it's the total amount because they're basically saying hold this, and if we get caught again, we're going to use this money to pay off our judgment. Were these violations, like how were these violations discovered? So last year we knew there were violations because it was in the Gazette. Mm -hmm. So I contacted the Attorney General's office to get the to get the judgments from them and he um, they had given me them and they also gave me a link to all the ones in the state. So this year I went again just to to look and they were on there, but I didn't see them on there last year, but mm -hmm. it happened in 16, so I don't know, if maybe I missed it. Um, so, I mean, I discovered it. And they, I mean, they, they checked the wrong box on the certificate and, I mean. Saying that they didn't have any violations? Yes, yeah. I mean, if the, on their fair wage certificate, they, wrong. They're going to have to amend it or fill out a new one. Right. So, I mean, they kind of got away with it last year. And no, I mean, the other two that were on the paper for it had to go through the process of getting involved. And yep. And the, your note of the solicitor suggesting the bond should be three or four times the amount that was in relation to this these this set of violations is it specific to this. So I asked oh, him. Specific to this. Yeah. I asked okay. him about it, and and he said um, he said we're just we're they're here to carry out the law and the certificate, and if you held the other two mm -hmm. to that standard, you have to do the same for them. And that was the mayor's. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have a reputation of this kind of behavior, and yeah, I mean, I feel like when we were asked to have wage bonds for this type of behavior, we made a commitment to it. 
I mean, it's not it's not our fault that this has happened. No, of course so, not. I mean, yeah. So and so, I understand. I mean, they're currently paying this off, or they have paid this off. So, what happens with this penalty? Where you know this. So the penalty would go to the Attorney General's office, and then the restitution goes to the employees that they've wronged. So that's something that's in process, and then we're asking for a wage. Right? I mean, that's just sort of separate from what we're doing right. here. Right. So, mm -hmm. right. I mean, it impacted 59 of their employees. Um. Oh, and this was issued October 13, 2017. So that's probably why it never, it hadn't made it on that list yet from mm -hmm. last year. So. And so we yes, asked that they hold this bond essentially in perpetuity, I mean like <coughs> every year that they, they want to renew. Um, for the applicant will provide a wage bond or wage insurance for the period of the license. Oh, okay. So you discovered this by reading it in the paper, but the did was there some sort of audit on their business? Or no. was this I read um last year I read that uh, they there was that article there that series in the Gazette about restaurants yep. downtown yep. and that's when um, they found out about Oriental Taste and Sakura. Yep. And then I had contacted the AG's office and they sent a link and I went back and looked at it this year. I think because somebody had left the box blank. Oh, that's time they did. Okay. Um, time someone totally this year checked. left it blank, and I and I was like, oh god. And then I was like, I'll just check. I'll just check it for good measure, like in the Excel sheet that link. And that's when and I sorted it by town. And that's when. Um. <coughs> nice work. <laughs> yep. So. So they should have provided a wage bond for the period of the license. So for so if so they provide the wage bond for the for the period of a license for a year. And then if there are no other violations, does the wage bond go away? No, for the period of them holding the license. Okay. <coughs> okay. Or until it's not three years, right? I mean is that how that I mean that's I mean, sort it of can't be forever and ever. Yeah, because it's because if they are clean for through is that right? I mean if the, if the violation is at the time when the violation occurred so or when it was issued um, so whatever the period is I don't know if it's from 2016 or it's 2017 um, right that if they're clear for three years from that then they can um, they would know legitimately that check this box <laughs> right. right and say that we haven't had a violation for three years so they would need the wage bond for three for, years yeah. from three years from when the violation occurred it seems according yeah. to yeah this was for the period of license i feel like these two sentences are contradicting well i think it's just because oh i see Except that yeah, it almost seems like there's a three-year clearance because of the way this reads about if they're able legitimately to check that top box. Right, because it's it, um, the violation of within the last three years. I mean, it seems to give it three-year chunks of... I suppose it's a clear... A clarifying question for Attorney Seaton. Yes, yeah. 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 for him tomorrow morning. So yeah. He comes right. in every Thursday. So. Great. This will be on the list. Right. Okay. And then, but the length of time isn't relevant or isn't necessary for us to make our determination not, tonight. No, no. Not yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right. And then the 
follow-up question, if it's indeed three years, the question is, is it from when the violation occurred or is it when the, the date issued of this by the inspector? Right. Which was 2017, which was a whole more than a year later, so um, that will be a, something I think about. Or Asaka, I'd want to know. Mm -hmm. Um, so, okay, so the recommendation specific to this is that we, um, like on the low end, say 180 or, you know, I don't know how specific we need to be because it's 50, it's, right, 60,566. Yeah, so um, 186 is three times. Yeah, if it was 62, but it's really, and it's close to 61. Oh, okay. That's right. I mean, whatever, so right. make it 183 or... Yeah. And that's something that they'll have to do potentially for mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a recommendation by the city solicitor, so um, Yeah. Are we ready to make a motion? Yes, you are. <laughs> oh, <I'm gonna> <laughs> um, I will make a motion regarding the amount of wage bond for licensee with wage violations, Osaka Japanese Incorporated, that the uh, wage bond should be in the amount of $180,000, which is approximately three times the amount of the penalty. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then we go back to Yeah. That. So we can circle back to um, approving their all alcohol license. So we are approving this with an expiration, with giving them until the end of January to get the wage bond. Is that? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the all annual liquor license for Osaka Japanese Incorporated contingent upon them securing their wage bond by January 31st, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Item ready to move on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Item number 10, request approval to renew and issue 2019 licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents and discussion of renewal issues. So. Have any questions about these? Um, no, so this is the same one. Yeah, yeah, so we'll break it out to the top. So I will make a motion to <coughs> request the or I will make a motion to renew the following twenty nineteen licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents. Common victualler with two exceptions noted, automatic amusement, entertainment, in holder with one exception noted, lodging, class one car dealership, class two car dealership, and class three car dealership with one exception noted. Okay, so. Oh, oh, oh so no, it's okay. Okay, okay. all in favor? Aye. Okay, so then Common Victualler for Fortune Creative LLC DBA Oriental Taste. Read back that complicated question. Rewind and mold. When I said rewind and mold in relation to right. 
You want to make a motion on that? I can do you remember? So I make a motion to approve the common pictorial light pictorial and license for Fortune Creative LLC DBA Oriental Taste contingent on renewal of their fair wage bond um, by January 31st, 2019. If that renewal is made before the end of this year, they can have a full year license. Otherwise, they will have a temporary license through January 31st, 2019. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Great. Osaka Japanese. Um, I will make a motion to approve the common picture for Osaka Japanese um, to be renewed with an expiration date of January 31st, 2019 or until a valid wage bond is presented. A second. All in favor? Aye. Auto -amu amusement. Oh, yeah, you did on those. Okay, so I don't have to do that again. The only one we have to do that okay. is the new one. Oh, okay. Here we go. The Elm Street Inn. Um, okay. I will make a motion to. Do you have any questions about oh, that? No. I'll make a motion to um, approve the convivial renewal for the Elm Street Inn, contingent on making good with the tax collector. To bring them out of tax lien. Um, maybe I should ask this before. So this is the same place that Suzanne was just talking about, right? Or is that was that? That's the automate. Oh, yeah. automate. Totally different. Okay, that was my confusion. Yeah. So this order. is a B and B, yeah, correct? It's a. Or it's not a B and B. It's an in holder, but it's. Oh, second. Did yeah. I not do that yet? I, don't I thought, know. I thought we went through it and then I asked my question, which. I'm not sure. Did you write it down? Uh, yes, I'm pretty anything, sure I did because so. okay. as I was sucking, I was I had the question. Yes. <laughs> then all in favor. Uh, Aye. I don't think we did that, but sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, so then class three car dealership, the issue of 1812 Paint and Body Incorporated. So, oh, so I know. Peggy has not come in as of 10 minutes ago. I've called her five times and asked her to bring down the license, so she's operating with that license and it's suspended. Um, she has not come in and made any payments since. So since her last meeting again. And our <laughs> expectation at, at the last meeting was that she would be bringing the license in then, like the next day. She said she was going to bring it in the next day. I, talk, I called her two days ago, said, Peggy, I need your license. She says it's on an envelope on her desk and she's going to uh, she'll have it by tomorrow morning. That was two days ago. Um, so, this is, uh, this is, uh, um, what does this mean of the request of that the city intercept payments issued to them? How would that happen? So, if, um, if they get paid for any contractual services, either for towing or I guess they they do things for the veterans office, mm -hmm. police department, um, central services, building department. So if they were to receive any payments from the city, there is a hold and all those payments are to be um, made payable mm -hmm. to the city. And again, this license that we're talking about is their selling used cars selling or motor junk right or it's a class, three class three. junk car okay yeah so Which considering yeah. the we left the last meeting really feeling that she was going to follow through yes and it hasn't happened um so i don't think that this license should be renewed 
Yeah, I agree. I think it needs to be pulled. Yeah. And she also suggested it was a very minor part of their business. So right. I don't know if that's true or not. Regardless, um, it's yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you have anything else that would be helpful for us to know? Um, no. Okay. That's it. Then I will make a motion to not renew the common Bichler license for the Class Three car dealership, 1812 Paint and Body Incorporated. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And it will just expire at the end of this year, whether or not she hands it back to you, right? It will. I mean, it's, she's not even... I mean, what is the, um, what, then how is that enforced? Yeah. That, so her, so we're not renewing the license to operate in regards to the Class 3. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is, will that have a, I mean, will they, how, who's to enforce if they are not operating as if they have a license? Okay. There are only yeah. agents. Yeah. So, I mean, for class two or class three, when you go and buy cars and to sell them on your lot or you go to auction, they ask to see your license. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a, 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 quite often. Uh, dealerships or auction companies will call the office to and verify. just verify they sure. have a valid license. Okay. I don't know how it goes for class three since people aren't buying mm -hmm. junk yep. cars. Um, so I don't know, but I now that the license uh, wasn't revoked, because if it's revoked, the registrar for the registry has to be notified. Well, it wasn't revoked, but it's not renewed. So Should it's it be also revoked? suspended. I mean, the current right. one is suspended, and that notice doesn't go to. No. I could. I mean, I can send a notice saying that it's revoked or not renewed, and it was suspended, and it's now it's not being renewed. So yeah, no longer hold a license. Yes, I don't know is that what, what they do with it is there. Right, right. If we can send one just to cover our bases. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Yeah. And then everything else with the tax collector, that's there. We don't have that. We don't have to make any motion regarding that. Correct. Uh, Our only issue is the license. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right, right. Great. And then item 11, clerk's update. Yes, so this is the APCC renewal certification. Um, well, these are the people who are not renewing. And then, oh, you'll we'll see at the bottom is um, we certify that the premises above mentioned municipality are now occupied, used, or controlled by the legacy. This this piece of paper is also going to be going with the um, all the renewal papers that I have that they have to sign. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're certifying is that Sakura is. It's not open for business, but they're holding their license. But about. you're renewing the license, yeah. and then it's it's explained on the bottom of their renewal that it's being transferred, and they're allowing they need more time to. Um, mm -hmm. They need to renew the license because they need more time to find a buyer. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and do you need us to sign? So you just need to sign that. Yes, please. Down here. Yep. So. Is that for this in compliance, right? So I think 
it was a little confusing to me too, but it says for any dealership that had less than compliance, 100% we ask that you take appropriate action. So I'm thinking that Ford was the only one that was 100% in compliance. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it? Oh, okay, because I was. Yeah, because I mean it has a 100 right there. So I went to view the full audit report and it gave a report for all these counties. Hampshire was not one of them. Northampton was nowhere on the audit report, so it made no sense to me. Right, right. Um, <laughs> so this is all we're going, we're going on. Just this one. I don't know if I mean. Or did they come? Did they actually? They audited every um, business in Northampton, or is that just like scattershot? And they they audited like Ford, and they did great, but we're just now supposed to let them know that let all the other dealerships know that they should be in compliance? Or right, they it looks like they only audited this one. And they did great. And they did great. <laughs> right. Oh, that, yeah. That, that, oh, that's okay. what I was wondering. Yeah, we've included the results of which the dealerships were which were audited. Yeah, the so municipality. Like oh. they audited them yeah. on. For I mean, I think, I think it does, what, you're, if you're mailing licenses anyways, it's a good idea just to update maybe update them on the policy and the, what's required of them sticker wise okay yeah it's just be a, like Ford a notice that they have to it's I mean they don't they just have to put it on a piece of paper it's, yeah yeah I mean they don't have to come up with anything or no anything, so no um yeah. So they came out here and did one? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's, yeah. All right. They probably just, yeah, did one in all the neighboring towns. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Alright. So we should, I should send a letter to, it'll... It, yeah. I mean, I think it's just like a reminder letter, right? I mean, yeah, I yeah. We'd like to assume they're all on something as far as we know. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was just thinking of it like Yeah. Oh wow, we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and I was one thinking one like just why would they give us the ones that are in compliance, <laughs> not the ones right. that are not in compliance. Yeah. Oh, okay, it makes sense now. Alright. Okay, so I can send a reminder letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, approval of minutes. Did you right. I read them too. Would you like to make a motion? I would like to make a motion to approve um, the minutes of November 6, 2018. I will second that motion. Oh. Aye. Any new business? Um, no. No. Do you have anything you'd like to discuss? Not on the record. <laughs> Just kidding. Same. <laughs> No new business. Um, so in that case, this meeting is adjourned. You have to make a motion. Oh, I would make a motion to adjourn this meeting. I heartily second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye.